put a few coats of paint on the front upper and lower arms and the rear upper wishbone. I held off on painting these because I had these plates made to mount the airbag and also to reinforce these arms. They're known for being pretty flimsy. Uh, GM kind of had this design for everything from the 50s into the 70s. I guess into the 90s with the uh, the B body, uh, you know, Caprices and Fleetwoods and stuff. So this basically, I'm just going to weld along these uh, these edges. Uh, there's already a hole in the bottom of these arms right there, so I'll just run a piece of all thread up to center this, and that'll locate the bag. And then uh, once it's all welded and everything, then I'll give it a few coats of paint and get the bushings pressed in uh, on the fronts. We went ahead and painted because I wanted to get those areas protected. I'm going to grind that back a little bit on these edges and then weld these plates in and that'll be the lower bag mount uh, for the fronts. So these parts, they're prototypes. I have to make a couple of little adjustments around these rivets just to get that extra clearance so they sit down flat onto the, uh, the original mount. Uh, but once that's done, I'll actually get a bunch of these laser cut and and our 58 through 60 uh, Cadillac front kit will be that much easier to install versus, you know, usually we would send a cup, but you can see the way this dips down for the, the coil spring, it's, it can be hard to get a cup to sit properly on there and have the bag sitting nice and flat. So this will be a nice improvement. Um, you know, that's sort of the point of taking these cars in for installation work is to sort of improve our, our bracket kits that we ship out as well, so. So let me get these modified, welded on, and get these painted, and then we'll start installing bushings and ball joints. I went ahead and painted the bottom sides of all the brackets that are gonna be welded in, as well as the inside of these uh, lower arms, uh, just to make sure we get everything recoated and don't have any rust issues. He's not gonna be driving this thing in bad weather or anything, but it's still, uh, you know, we don't want the stuff falling apart. So, um, yeah, I got to run out and grab some more of this paint. This stuff, I know I've talked about it before, I, I think. Uh, VHT roll bar and chassis paint. This stuff lays down super nice, it dries fast, and it is strong. I did it, uh, I used it on the Nerf bars on the 4Runner, um, and I didn't use it on the bumpers because I didn't know about it at the time. And uh, I'll be going back and doing the bumpers. The bumpers are all, already you know, starting to fade out and fall apart. You know, the paint's falling off of them. Um, but this stuff, uh, it's a savage. It's not cheap, but definitely worth it for anything that's going under a car. Um, so yeah, we'll let this dry. I'll go grab more paint and a few other things and I'll be back. All right. So now that the paint dried, went ahead and ground back just the edge all along, uh, both pieces, um, just to get rid of any paint, rust, whatever. Um, give us a good, good surface to weld to. Uh, piece of all thread through the factory hole on the bottom of the arm and then centered it up on here. I didn't tighten it up or anything. So I'm just going by feel as far as centering that up. So all I'm going to do is just run a couple of beads along these edges just to seal up and lock these two pieces together. And then, uh, We'll go ahead and paint it. And then for final assembly, you could snake a bolt through here and try and figure out how to tighten it into the bag. But I'm just, on these kits, I'll provide a piece of all thread that goes all the way through the arm into that plate and into the bag. Um, and that'll be a whole lot easier to install. So let's get these welded up, then we'll paint them up, and then we can start assembling them, put bushings in and everything. All right, so just ran a few inches of weld along the edges of, uh, of all the arms. And that should be enough to, to strengthen things up a little bit, resist some twisting. And then obviously the, once the all threads in, that'll be sandwiching this plate to the arm, to the bag, um, and making it even stronger. So we'll let those cool down real quick. I'll move over to the front arms, get those plates welded in, and, uh, and then it's time to paint. All right, and that takes care of the fronts. So we just threw a couple beads right on these uh, these edges here. The weight of the vehicle is gonna push the bag down on the plate, which is gonna push it into position 
you know, nothing can really move, but those welds just ensure that nothing, if you ever put it up on a rack or whatever, the plate can't come loose and shift or anything. So I'm going to get these to cool off. We'll get some paint on them and then we'll move on to assembly. All right. It's been a couple days. We got bushings and ball joint and everything installed into the arms. Got those reinforcing plates with the bag brackets welded in um, and then threw some of that paint on there. We've got the rear axle. We just wire wheeled it real quick, threw some paint on it. Uh, axles are still out right now. I'm adapting the Willwood uh, brake plates to fit this bolt pattern, this flange pattern. Um, that's almost done, so we'll be able to assemble the rear disc brakes after the axle's installed. Um, but yeah, basically we're ready to put the axle up in here. We uh, hit the frame with a wire wheel, did a little bit of the body, but there's some rust issues that, uh, that are going to be addressed by the next uh, place that has this thing. So we didn't want to go too crazy with the undercoating and make more work for them, but we wanted to sort of make it where it'll be a little easier to touch up that undercoating without having to take the suspension back apart. Um, so we made sure to hit all the, the frame rails and uh, cross members and all that stuff and the, the more solid sections above those areas where nothing's really gonna be modified. Um, as far as the upper spring plates, uh, from the factory there's a, a half inch bolt uh, that you take off and there's a, a like a coil shaped plate or whatever that, that holds the coil in position. We dropped that out of the way and then this hole got drilled out to a half inch diameter um, so that the all thread for our bag bracket will be able to go up through there. Um, we did that on both sides. We're about to run new fuel line. We pulled the old line off. So that runs from there and sort of snakes over and, uh, and back over where the, the gas tank is going to be hung. Um, and that's about it. So we're about ready to, to put the, the rear suspension arms in and then we'll put the axle up and, and bolt everything together. And that way we can measure for the rear shocks and, uh, and also make sure that we've got the amount of drop that we want out of this thing. So um, yeah, let's get, uh, get the axle mounted and we can move on to the front. All right, we got the upper and lower arms in and hoisted the axle up in there, got all of the, the connection points on it, hooked back up, drive shaft, lower links, upper link. Uh, so now that it's together, we went ahead and jacked the axle up and here, hold me. <laughs> it's, uh, it's tucking and that's without the skirt. It's pretty crazy. So. What we need to do now, uh, we've got about seven inches from this lower plate that the bag's gonna mount to on the lower arm up to the uh, pocket where the cup's gonna mount. So a bag, when it's fully flattened out, is about three inches. So we're gonna make a, a cup, you know, four inches would be perfect, but we wanna leave a little bit of room just for wiggle. So we'll make a three and a half inch tall cup, um, bolt that in, bolt the bag to it. And, uh, and that'll take care of that. I measured for the rear shocks um, from this point to that point is about 13 and a half inches. Uh, Ride Tech shows a shock that has a compressed height of 12, which I think is actually measuring, including the bushings on each end. So I'm gonna order those up, make sure that they are the correct ones. They show they're right for the back of 58 through, I think 64 DeVilles. I think they all share this same suspension. So we'll get a pair of those coming. Um, I need to measure up for front shocks tomorrow uh, so I can order those at the same time. Um, and then, yeah, bags and shocks will basically knock out the rear suspension. Um, the disc brakes, um, Willwood does not make a, uh, a disc brake mount uh, backing plate for the Cadillac axle. Um, we ordered one for Impala and the bolt spacing is very close. So I'm just basically taking a, a burr tool uh, on an air grinder and, and uh, ovaling out the holes just slightly. 
to get that plate to mount. The bearing size is the same. It looks like the offset's gonna be a match and everything. So we just need to get, uh, get those plates mounted on here, get the axles back in, all that good stuff. And at that point, uh, barring any surprises, the rear of this thing will be done and we can focus on the front. So yeah, stay tuned, we'll get to that. All right, we've got upper and lower arms in, did a quick soft assembly, you know, didn't tighten anything down on the spindle and all that. And the lower arm contacts the frame right across here um, and is limiting how much drop we're gonna be able to get. So I marked it out, we're going up uh, inch and five eighths, um, front and rear. We're just gonna go straight up, straight across, straight back down. Uh, we're gonna radius these corners so we don't create any stress risers. And then obviously we'll cut this, uh, this stop off of here as well. Grind everything back, give it a lick of paint, and then I think we're ready to install bags and do final assembly on this thing. So that took a little more trimming than I expected. And now I understand on the other 59 we did uh, that was already bagged. Now I see why they had these spring pockets cut out so much. I thought they had done it for bag clearance and I was trying to figure that out because these pockets are huge. But actually it's for the lower control arm to clear as it uh, swings up as you drop the, uh, the corners of the arm basically hit the frame and we got another three inches of drop by trimming out like this. So this is about an inch and five eighths up from the base of the frame. And then uh, we had to eyebrow it a little more right here for this hump on the lower control arm. We had to trim the lip of the, the control arm down a little bit uh, and just profile it because it was actually hitting Oh, right where this mark is right here. Um, but now we've got all the clearance in the world. So here, let me lift it while holding the camera. There we go. So you can see basically that hump wants to touch right at the same time. That part of the arm is touching the bottom of the frame right there. And this basically is gonna have us laying flat out on a 20 inch wheel. So we got the clearance we needed. Um, I've got to do a little bit of cleanup. Whoops, there we go. Uh, a little more cleanup on all of this. Um, and then we can measure up for our upper shock bracket. Um, I'm probably going to use the plates that we run on um, Buicks. It's really similar to our, really similar to our Impala bracket. Um, just some slight uh, geometry differences, but that should nestle right in here and come up just to this side of the, the brake, uh, uh, brake line bracket. Um, and these arms are already notched right here. Um, this, this generation of Cadillac was available with air ride from the factory. Um, so the bag would have been here and they actually had a shock bracket that went right up in there. Uh, so yeah, we're getting close on the front end. The one thing I assembled, oops. There we go. I assembled this side uh, with the upper cup and the bag and everything and discovered that uh, where we're gonna pass the airline through, um, we need to notch out here. Let me, <laughs> shouldn't have gone over here. Hang on. There we go. Up inside here where the spring used to sit, um, the airline fitting basically is pointing right at this edge. So I'm gonna take and just notch right through there. Still tons of area that the, the cup is gonna sit on here, um, but it'll just make a little bit of room for the airline to come right up through there and we'll be in good shape. Um, from there, we've already got the Willwood brake brackets on there. I'm gonna wipe them down because we've got a bunch of grinding dust on them. Um, but we'll get all that cleaned up, get some paint on this thing after the shock brackets are on, and we will be all set on the front and ready to go finish up the rear. Okay, so we bolted the all thread up through the original shock tower location. Let me move that out of the way. Let's see if you can see. 
yeah, you can kind of see basically the whole fitting is available right now. So we can just push our airline right down inside there and it's not going to contact anything and be in the way. Cup is still engaging. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, that's lousy. Well, you'll take my, have to take my word for it, I'm afraid, because <laughs> it doesn't want to focus up in there. But basically, the cup is sitting right on the original spring perch uh, with lots of engagement. Man, that is way out of focus. There we go. Um, so this was just for demonstration. Normally, what we'll do is bolt the lower onto the lower bag plate first, then swing the whole arm up in there and get that, uh, that stud up through the shock tower. It's a lot easier than trying to line up that hole with the, the middle of the, uh, the bag. Um, so we do it the other way around, but I wanted to show you how that engages and what we had to cut. Okay, so the next step, now that we've clearanced for that upper uh, bag mount for the fitting, I've reassembled upper, lower control arm, spindle assembly, all that. It's all just loosely assembled because it's all going to have to come back off again while I do the welding. But now you can see all the clearances that had to be made to make room for the control arm and get this thing on the ground. So the next step is we need to get a shock in here. And from the factory, these were available with Air Ride. Um, and they had a shock sitting to the outside of the, the control arm. So the upper control arm, as I mentioned, already has sort of a, uh, a curved notch in it up there. And we've got a spot on the frame that sort of clears steering and everything. So all I need to do is just put one of our universal towers up in here and see what we have room for um, and what length shock we're gonna need to run with all of this to get, uh, get it to lay all the way out without binding up the shock without getting in the way of the steering um, and all of that. So let me get that figured out and then I'll show you what I've got. All right, so I ended up using one of the shock brackets for our 59 Buick kits. Um, I just had to trim off a little bit here. Uh, the other side, the fender liner is a little closer and it was contacting and we don't need that area anyway on this one. Um, so I've got it positioned. Um, I just clamped it in place so we could cycle the upper arm, make sure it doesn't hit the tower anywhere. We've got good clearance there. There we go. So it swings past that with no problem. Um, I went ahead and took a flap wheel to the frame rail, um, cleaned it all up. So we should be ready to weld. These are normally for bolting in. I'm just going to go ahead and weld through those, give it a little more strength and repeat on the other side and we should be good to go. All right, while well, we wait for the grease fire inside the frame rail to die down. Um, yeah, vertical welds turned out fine. Upside down or running along this bottom, it looks like a little bit of, um, you know, just the, the dirt and grease. I wasn't able to get enough of it out of the, uh, the frame. So we got a little bit of, a little bit of crud in the weld. Not gonna affect the strength on this. Uh, it's not under that much stress. And we got those rosette welds in. So once that cools down, I'll put the suspension back together, measure for exactly where the lower mount needs to be, and then we can paint everything and hopefully assemble for the final time. All right, I did a little more grinding on this one. Looks like I got away with uh, without as much crap in the weld on the bottom there. But that one's in position too. Clears the upper arm. Um, yeah, so we should be ready to, uh, well, once this cools down a little bit, we'll reassemble everything, jack this all the way up, um, and then measure exactly where we can put a tab for the lower shock mount and then what shocks we need to order. Uh, we're going to go with Ride Tech, uh, I believe the RQ series, single adjustable damping shocks at all four corners. Rears are straightforward. Um, they have a, a part number listing for 58 through 64 Cadillac rear. Um, front, they don't because they want you to use shock waves, and we're not doing that. Um, you can message me if you have questions why. Um, so, yeah, let's get this cooled off and get it assembled, and we'll be ready to take the next step. All right, so for the lower, we need it to be right at the bottom of this 
like uh, this factory bracket um, that's riveted to the control arm. So I whipped up a simple little L bracket. I didn't have any material that already had a tab at the end, so I just took a tab and a piece of uh, quarter inch, it's all quarter inch, just welded them together real quick. And what that's gonna do is sit right in here and we'll weld it to the top part of the lower control arm and then actually it sits right there. Um, so we'll be able to get a good weld there, good weld underneath and on the edges there, and it'll just straddle across the, uh, the stamping. Uh, double checked. Uh, let me see if I can use my wrist. So we can see when it's steer, when we steer it to full lock, uh, we've still got room around the steering arm for the shock. I double checked and ran a rod from the upper mount to the lower mount. The angles don't get crazy or anything. We don't run into any frame clearance issues or anything like that. So I think this is the right spot. It's pretty close to where the factory, um, Air Ride Option 59 Cadillac had them, uh, but it's a little lower because this gets lower because of all the cutting we did. So let me get these welded in and I think we're ready to button up the front. All right, I think that looks like a shock mount. So we got lots of weld on the bottom, plenty of weld on the top. I might throw a little triangular gusset right here just to make sure this doesn't want to bend over time. Again, it's a shock. It's not bearing the weight of the vehicle, but uh, better safe than sorry. So I have to wait until the actual shocks show up um, to actually just make sure that a gusset will clear and cycle through the, the range of motion and everything without binding. But for now, I think we can move forward. If I have to weld that on after the fact, it's not something I have to disassemble everything to uh, to make happen. So I'm gonna give everything a quick wipe down. We got a bunch of bunch of grinding dust and everything all over everything. Um, but yeah, let's get it uh, let's get it all cleaned up and start reassembly. All right, we're about ready to reassemble. First thing I do is get the lower bag uh, bolt bolted to the bag through the the lower plate, and you can see. That hole's recessed inside there a little bit. So what I do, a little tip for you. Um, so I just get a, a shallow socket, put the bolt and the, the washers and everything on there, and then stick those through there. And that way you can get the bag started um, without having to like worry about dropping the washers down <laughs> inside of this plate and everything. Um, so once that's done, you've got everything on there. I just leave it loose. So you still have room to move the bag, but it's easy to tighten up later. And then, uh, basically we'll just swing this whole assembly up. Oops. Um, line that all thread up back through the, the shock tower and bolt it in with the, uh, the nut and washer and everything. And then you're good to go. All right. Now it's starting to look like something. So got everything kind of painted, undercoated, cleaned up as much as it needs to be. Uh, bag is fully mounted, uh, tightened down all the bolts holding the spindle um, and the, the brake bracket, the upper lower ball joints and the tie rod ends are all snugged up, brand new cutter pins. Um, yeah, so I think we're at the point, oh yeah, new hardware for the sway bar. Um, and then on this side, I started just by dry fitting the brake rotor on here and just double checked offsets, make sure there's clearance for the caliper bracket. So we're in good shape there. Um, so the next step is we need to pack the bearings in here, install the rear seals. Um, on the rotors and then we can do final assembly of the brake rotor and then set the depth um, of the the willwood caliper um, they include a bunch of shims so we got to make sure that it is right in the middle of um, you know basically it's centered so that the inside and outside pads grab at the same time so i'll show you that once it's all installed but right now, I'm going to put some gloves on and grab a tub of grease and get my hands all greasy packing bearings. 
All right, we're moving right along. It is Sunday, and uh, normal people are probably watching the Super Bowl, but uh, yeah, not my jam. So um, yeah, figured I'd come out here and get some more done. Um, ran the fuel line. Uh, had to order a fuel filter. The one I had gotten in was the wrong size and didn't come with a gasket. So that should be here this afternoon. Um, installed the uh, Power Master um, alternator. It's uh, designed to look and fit like a generator, but it puts out way better voltage even at idle. Um, so that was a must with the compressors. And then I think he's going to put some stereo in here too. So we want to be on top of that. Um, while I'm waiting for the fuel filter, uh, what else? New belts, uh, new lower radiator hose so far, and then I went to put this beautiful radiator in, and it is actually a really good fit. Location of hoses is in the right spot, has the transmission cooler line bungs and all that, uh, except whoever built it welded the mounting brackets on opposite, uh, you know, so backwards. Um, so I'm going to run out to the hardware store, grab some, uh, spacer material and some long 5 16 bolts and, uh, get the thing bolted in. The owner of the car is going to reach out to the company and if they decide to swap him out, um, he can certainly change it, but will at least make it safe for now. Um, what else? Still need to mount the booster, but I'm going to need an extra pair of hands. So that'll wait till tomorrow when Rick's back in, um, so the last thing I'm going to do under the hood for now is I test fit one of the wheels yesterday and oh yeah we got the bearings all packed and everything so this is ready to mount the caliper and put a wheel on but the um I jacked the the suspension up to check clearances and the fender well is going to need to be cut out to clear 20. so I went ahead and marked where we need to cut um, I'm just going to make a real simple, drill that out, put a nice radius right at the cut line, and then uh, we'll just do some straight cuts. Be easy to patch in later if he wants to tub that back in or whatever's clever. Um, that's I'm not a sheet metal guy, so <laughs> we've been through this on other videos. He doesn't want me trying to trying to weld that stuff. Uh, so I'm going to cut those out and then probably put this back up in the air line up the calipers, get the brake lines figured out, um, and then uh, we'll move on from there. So yeah, let's get after it. All right, we're inching ever closer to seeing this Cadillac leave the shop. Let me give you a quick update on what we've got done, what's still left, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing this thing on the ground later today. So let me flip the camera around, I'll show you what we got. All right, starting up front, I think we already had most of this on last time, but we've got brake pads in. We had to shim the calipers just a little bit to get everything perfectly centered in here. So you can see there's like no gap, but everything still turns nicely. And tie rods are hooked up. We did a basic tape measure alignment, so it's close. Brake lines are in. Shocks just arrived a few minutes ago, so we gotta get those bolted on. Um, but basically, front's done other than shocks. And then, moving to the back, we ran our lines and wiring uh, just along the frame rail. Keep it up away from exhaust and everything. I've got a grommet to go here. This is where the uh, wire for, let's see, this is fuel pump. Um, this is the controller cable for the airlift 3P system. And then uh, that little braided wire right there is actually an ignition source for the 3P as well. So that all ties into this loom of airline and wiring and runs back. And then back here, we've got the bags and bag brackets mounted. We're gonna trim off the, the excess all thread here. Uh, but aside from that, that's all done. Rear brakes are all mounted up. Again, everything shimmed and uh, perfect clearance. We've got brake lines hooked up. We need to double check clearance as it cycles through the suspension, make sure that's not gonna contact the frame and, and bind anything up. But I think we're clear on that. Um, what else? Everything's all tightened up. 
and ready to go. Gas tank is mounted. We just went and picked up the little uh, rubber coupler that'll go for the filler neck to come out. So we gotta get that on, uh, but all new straps, new tank, new sending unit and all that. That's all hooked up. Uh, the mechanical fuel pump was bad on the engine. So I just picked up one of these little Edelbrock uh, electric fuel pumps. So it's wired in uh, and grounded. I'm just gonna tie all that up and, and clean it up, but that'll be after we run the airlines into the, the trunk floor area or whatever you wanna call it, the area under the bed floor. Um, and then again, rear shocks just showed up. So we're gonna get those bolted into the factory spots. And then we are really close to being able to just put wheels on and put this on the ground. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. And next time I fire up uh, the camera, it should be ready to air out. All right. I think our journey on this car is coming to an end. <sighs> it is off the rack. It runs, it drives mostly. Um, yeah, I think, uh, suspension, brakes, engine stuff is all as done as we're going to get it. So <laughs> let me give you the quick walk around, kind of wrap up whatever on it. And, uh, let's talk about it. Um, yeah, we'll start at the front, uh, engine bay. Oh. So we got a radiator in. Um, it was almost the right radiator. We had to modify the transmission cooler lines and modify the mounts to get it situated properly, but it is in. We've got all new radiator hoses, new transmission cooler lines. We've got the Willwood master cylinder and a new brake booster and new belts. We've got a Power Master alternator in place of the original generator. I still have to mount this battery a little better. 59 Cadillacs use a weird battery. Uh, it's a weird size. This battery fits and has the amps needed uh, to start it reliably, but it's it sits in there a little funky. So um, I'm going to recommend that he, he picks up the right one and, and, uh, and fixes that. Um, Still got to tie up some wiring here. We've got three different runs of four gauge uh, running various places. One straight from the battery down to the starter, one from the battery to the alternator, and then the last one is going to go all the way back to the, uh, the trunk or whatever you want to call it under the bed. Um, so that one I haven't terminated yet because I still need to mount a circuit breaker. Um, and we don't have any of the management installed in the rear. So I'll go over that in just a sec. All right, we tied up those loose ends under here. So all of the power wires now are bundled together, run to the breaker for the air ride. And then one of these goes to starter, one of these goes to alternator, uh, all to the battery, and then the voltage regulator power. There's some sort of thing, this box, whatever this used to do, it's hooked back up to power, so so be it. Hopefully that'll turn the generator light off. Um, other than that, just clipped off a few cable tie-ins and double-checked everything, and I believe this is ready to roll out to... But the beauty of this thing is how dang good it runs. For having sat so long, you would never know it. Let me, uh, let me show you what we got. Um, Don't mind my temporary seat, but we had a key made for the ignition switch. For now, I've got a, uh, just a wire going to the ignition uh, leg of the ignition of the, the switch to power the electric fuel pump. But make sure, is it in park? Yep. Do you hear that? That's unbelievable. Look how good this thing runs. Like butter. I love it. So far so good on temperature and everything too. It hasn't gotten hot. Power steering works perfectly. Look at this. Woo. Love it. 
these old caddies are amazing. So I got the door shut in here. It's like no smoke coming out of the tailpipes. Just clean. So, all right, let me shut that off again. Ugh. All right. So I'm leaving all that kind of bare for now. He's pulling the whole dash out to uh, restore it and, and fix a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna leave the ignition switch dangling. There's no point in putting it back into its socket just to have him tear it back out. Uh, likewise with that fuel pump wire, it comes out of a grommet in the floor along with the uh, ignition source for the airlift system and the uh, USB cable for the airlift controller. Um, I'm just going to leave that all sitting for now. Whoever does the interior, new carpet and all that can uh, situate it where it needs to be uh, for its final final, final uh, setting. But uh, yeah, no sense in doing work just to have it undone. Um, moving to the back, for now, under here, I've just got a couple of Schrader valves going over to some bulkhead fittings up there. We've got our wiring back here, but I'm not putting any of that in just yet. I'll have the panel all built and we can just drop it in, hook up the lines and the wiring and it'll be all set. Um, yeah, underneath, well, you can kind of see them. Let's go to the front and we'll show you. There we go. There's those Willwoods and those Coddingtons. Um, so yeah, got the brakes all bled, got everything working the way it's supposed to. That took a little extra time. Um, Willwood brake bleeders. Was, I was trying to use a power bleeder, and as soon as you crack the little bleeder screw, the air would leak past the threads of the bleeder, uh, which wouldn't let it, uh, you know, pull pull a vacuum. Um, so I gravity bled them overnight, and then finished it off with a power bleeder, and it worked out great. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much. Everything done in a nutshell, but I guess what really matters is what this thing looks like laid out. So why don't I go ahead and set the camera down real quick and I will let the air out of this thing and you can see what it looks like. That's what we wanted to see. <laughs> so try to envision this thing with all the rust repaired, some brand new paint, different set of wheels, and all that chrome. And uh, yeah, that's what we should be seeing here probably by the end of summer. Um, I'm thankful we're not doing the rust repair. I'm bummed I'm not going to get to see it all done. But uh, yeah, look for it at uh, Cruising the Coast down, uh, down in Mississippi uh, later this year. It's been a journey. This has been a lot more work than we usually take on, but it's a good customer and we had the space to take it on. So I'm glad we were able to, to get it a little closer to, uh, to ready for him. So stay tuned. I'll try to send a follow-up if he uh, sends me any progress pictures or video um, we'll post it up on our Instagram in the meantime we've got a couple other projects already in the, the pipeline here so we're gonna have to get started on those and hopefully get started on some of our own stuff soon here but uh, that'll be for another video so thanks again for watching and uh, hit the uh, the like and the subscribes and the the bell and all the other YouTube stuff. Really appreciate you guys. Um, it's not uh, it's not a full time job making these videos just yet. <laughs> I still have a day job, but uh, it's uh, this is a lot of fun setting these up and and sharing these projects with you guys. So uh, look forward to seeing what you guys are working on too. Thanks again. <laughs>